Space Sims, the final frontier. The gaming industry has long been wary of this genre. Making compelling content at this scale is full of great risk and great reward. Since 2012, Star Citizen has been pushing the limits, going where no space sim has gone before. Let me show you how. I'm sitting here in my ship. It's an Origin 325A, a small fighter. Let's turn it on. Dashboard in front of me, there's a rich suite of indicators and systems to explore. You can tweak everything from shields, stealth systems, to power levels of components like your quantum drive and blasters. The cockpit mechanics already rival the best space sims out there, but it gets better. Older space sims chain you to your cockpit, but Star Citizen understands you need to stretch your legs from time to time. Let's have a walk around the ship. As you can see, Every nook and cranny in this game is meticulously textured and detailed. It pushes even the best gaming rigs to the brink. Every inch of this ship also has a function. There's a bed, a sink, and even a toilet for those extra long space voyages. The ship is also quite small. It's only 27 meters in length. Larger carriers in this game can be kilometers long, supporting crews of hundreds. Here's the hatch to my spacecraft. Let's have a walk outside. Zero gravity takes a bit to get used to. Our armor has EVA thrusters, which makes maneuvering possible. There's lots of freedom out here, and some great views to drink in. Just watch your oxygen, and don't take off your helmet. Let's get back in the ship and have a conversation about scale. I want to show you a holographic model of the current system we're in, Stanton. It has four planets, each with moons. The current radius of the solar system is roughly the orbital distance of Mercury, which sounds small, but it's definitely not. That's a radius of 0.33 astronomical units, or 50 million kilometers. That's six quadrillion square kilometers of simulated space. For all practical purposes, Star Citizen has reached the maximum sensible size for any simulated game world. To support this, the coordinate system of the underlying engine uses 64-bit primitive types to represent objects in 3D space. When the game fully releases, there will be 100 plus systems to explore, all with this epic scale. To make this scale really sink in, let's find a planet to land on. I picked Daymar because of its thick atmosphere, which is great for showing off some more cutting edge mechanics. Let's speed this up until we hit atmosphere. When you're in atmosphere, an aerodynamic flight model kicks in. It can be disorienting. Some ships behave quite differently in atmosphere. Top speed decreases and fuel consumption increases as your ship combats the forces of drag. Luckily, a small fighter like my 325 maintains good control in atmosphere. Atmospheric density also increases the lower you go, which continues to affect your flight. As you get close to the ground, you can see the planet really come to life. Valleys, mountains, and rocks all pop into view. With a radius of 295 kilometers, Daymar has just over a million square kilometers of terrain to explore. In this game world, it's considered a moderate-sized moon, identical in surface area to the dwarf planet Ceres. This insane scale, detail, and seamless space-to-surface transition is made possible with a slew of cutting-edge technologies, and some serious memory hardware. To run this game comfortably, you need a high-speed solid-state drive, preferably a PCIe-based M.2, 
and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Star Citizen uses a clever mix of procedural generation and handcrafted environments to make the planets. Sophisticated terrain generation algorithms simulate things like wind and fluid erosion, so these valleys and canyons look really convincing. With this, let's find a good landing spot. As we get out of our ship, you can see the impressive detail of the lunar surface. A convincing rendering of an alien world. This isn't a friendly place either. It's a nitrogen methane atmosphere with punishingly hot temperatures. scratch the surface of what this planetary engine is capable of. Let's go somewhere a bit more... livable. It's obvious that Microtech orbits a bit further away from the star. A terraforming accident has left this planet a harsh, cold place. But if you're a motivated explorer, you can find pockets of alpine beauty here. Lush, delicate whispers of what could have been. The developers are building an impressive climate simulation here, which mirrors what happens on Earth. The system looks at atmospheric and terrain properties to simulate the humidity and temperature on different areas of the planet. Vegetation, objects, and textures are assigned to different temperature and humidity ranges, so you get convincing biomes with smooth transitions between them. Notice that down on this valley floor, we have some leafy aspens and bushes. The temperature is actually above freezing here. As I walk up this ridge, the temperature drops and I get different vegetation, until it all turns to ground plants and eventually snow. Atmospheric conditions are also calculated on the fly, based on the shape and elevation of the terrain. What this means is that high ridges and mountain peaks are frequently windy, as they are on Earth. To cap this all off, I have one last thing to show you. Welcome to ArcCorp, the most industrialized world in human space. The entire planet is covered in manufacturing facilities and skyscrapers. Nothing like this has ever been attempted before in a video game. These procedurally generated cityscapes stretch for thousands of kilometers. If there's anything that keeps my faith in the developers of this game, and whether their technical chops match their ambitions, it's this planet right here. At the very least, it's a tantalizing display of what's possible in a video game. A monument to the staggering progress and immense potential of this entertainment medium. No matter what you think of Star Citizen and its development, I think it can make us all agree on one simple thing. It's a damn good time to be a gamer.